Welcome to Pine the Numbers, the football card podcast that gives you up-to-date info on football cards in the hobby. I want to update you weekly, giving you trends in pricing, trend in player performance, and give you my perspective on how to blend the two to help you find some success in your collecting. This week, I want to help paint the picture of what's going on with Mosaic and help us project what we can expect from Prism going forward in December. We'll talk about our rookie cards that we like to watch, a little bit of our week nine performances, and some players I think you should be buying into as we look into week 10. Now, to the show. Welcome to Behind the Numbers, week nine, episode nine. Uh, first off, I just want to thank you guys so much for the feedback that you guys gave me in the comments last week. Um, really helped me with some ideas to help improve the show because I definitely take that to heart in terms of how I want to improve for you guys. And uh, just congratulations to Avid Atlanta fan who was the winner of the RB rookie lot and haven't heard back from him yet. But Avid, if you are watching, you can uh, DM me on Twitter at tbanker28 or just write a message in the comments of how I can reach you and we'll find out a way to send those cards to you. But what a week, you know, another fun week of football, week nine. So a lot of interesting games. We'll kind of get to that in the quick little run through with the recap. Uh, just got done watching the Patriots barely escape beating the Jets with a last second field goal as I get the show going here for you on Monday night. So happy to be here. So segment one, I want to kick it off for you guys just going right into uh, a mosaic based prism projection. I did a little bit of research of looking at um, the mosaic basketball versus the prism basketball and just seeing how mosaic values lined up versus the prism values just so that we kind of know where this really strong rookie class for football is going to go potentially when it comes to prism. Cause I think that's what the big question is. We have three big time quarterbacks in this product. That's going to drive it. we have a ton of skill position guys that are producing. So I was just interested to kind of see um, just where it's going to land. I think it's going to be a pretty insane number to start. And I think that it's going to be important for us in terms of collecting to know about what it should be. So we don't buy in too early. Uh, so with that, I just wanted to kind of talk about first off is that the first thing we have to point out is that I was just looking at some of the numbers from week four and in mosaic prices in week four that uh, I believe it was Shani and I talked about was Burrow at the time was 55 for his base. Herbert was 44 and two was 36 and all of them are about half of that now uh, about down to 27 to 24 per base mosaic card. So just in four weeks, we've already seen, a 50% cut on those base cards. I mean, we expect it to come down a little bit. Um, it's probably come down farther than I thought it would just for now. And I think that's just the anticipation of Prism and the prices that we're expecting to see, which is, we're going to get to that in a bit, is hard to stomach <laughs> when it comes to box prices. Um, but here's the, the breakdown that I want to run through with you guys was that Zion PSA 10 Mosaic base uh, recently sold for $178. So it's just base mosaic, uh, PSA 10, 178. His PSA 10 prism base, 600. Okay, and I'm lining these up so we can try to see that gap between the two products and just what be how football is going to be because it's still the first run through for Mosaic football. So uh, gives us some context of how to match those up. I got Ja Morant, PSA 10 base Mosaic, 170, and his PSA 10 prism base, 450. Okay, so you're looking at about three times, three X. So three X from mosaic to a prism is what we're kind of looking at. And to kind of further, further illustrate that, I went to just one level uh, color I could find. I found a PSA 10 mosaic green for Zion was 274 and a PSA 10 green uh, prism was 1000. So it's almost four X there. Uh, the John Morant, same situation. His uh, green is 255 for the mosaic and 625 for the green. So really right between that three, three and a half, X range in terms of mosaic versus prism. So when we get to those mosaic prices right now, we're just looking at those base prices are hovering around 25, 20, you know, $27 for Burrow and those top QBs. It's gonna be really interesting to see when those grading values kind of come down to what we're, uh, it's going to set the tone for what prism graded will be. It'd be a while for that to happen, obviously with the gradings being backed up, but still you can kind of see where some of those high prices are in terms of the quarterbacks coming out in terms of their graded cards, because there's not very many of the mosaic graded right now. So look at the basketball market. Like I said, we got about a, it's basically three X to th three to four X of the mosaic to the prism. Um, with December 2nd release date for prism right now, we're looking at hobby cases sitting at about 12 grand, 11,899 for a 12 box case. 
Uh, Prism No Huddle Box is doing pre-sales on eBay for right now for around seven eighty nine, and then the Prism Hobby Box pre-sales around thirteen hundred on eBay. So you can just see that these are going to be insane prices. They're very expensive breaks, very expensive uh, to get in. So it's to be really interesting to see how those singles come out. If those singles are going to be able to match the wax price because they're not then it's going to be a sit and wait and hopefully you can buy some singles and take advantage of it that way because if the wax is outpriced it's going to be outpriced but it's such a massive class that it's probably going to hold for a bit and i think these prison bases are going to come out at probably almost two to three x of what we saw the the mosaic come out i mean burrow came out at almost 75 80 for his base mosaic so his base prism might come out over two hundred dollars, and that's just something we're gonna have to wait for that to kind of stabilize once that happens here in the next couple uh, few weeks. So, with that, as I said, just getting to the kind of mosaic singles, uh, the mosaic single PSA ten sales, the Tua. So I got the three quarterbacks for you here, just a couple of notable sales: Tua uh, Green Mosaic uh, PSA ten, six ten, and five thirty five. And so you kind of think about the basketball; that's pretty comparable because. Their mosaics were closer to 300, 400 range. So they're a little high right now because there's some of the first cards coming out. So it's going to be interesting to see where those kind of dip to. Um, Herbert Green Mosaic was 480, and a Burrow Green Mosaic was 346. Kind of interesting to see all these differences. I have no idea why the two is sold for so much at the time. Obviously, he's been hot to his hot start with two big wins, which we'll get to. Um, but just kind of seeing those prices fluctuate between the greens is definitely something interesting to watch. Um, so a couple other ones for Tua here. Tua Reactive Orange PSA 10, uh, 315. Okay, so it's kind of the reactives have been a little bit lower. Still a, a cool looking parallel, still a cool looking card. Uh, those come out of the uh, hangers. Uh, so those are other cards are going to be. I think I think those cards are going to hold pretty pretty well once things are kind of leveled out. And um, then just another fun card for a sale that's not PSA 10 was his white mosaic, which I saw one of those pulled in the break, uh, 1375. So the, the upside's still there for mosaic. There's some huge cards to be had in that product, and that's why people are still jumping to breaks like myself, uh, still enjoying the low numbered cards. The, the no huddle boxes are really fun to see the numbered cards that they can pull out. Um, so definitely been still <laughs> fun to go after, even though we're waiting for Prism. Uh, Herbert's a couple others for Herbert. Herbert's PSA 10 silver mosaic, uh, 70850. So that's commanding a pretty good value for a mosaic silver. Those have been, like, I've seen, I, I would say that just in my Facebook, uh, viewing of sales and, uh, cards that I've seen go, I'd say more than half of those silvers have some defect that's been like, uh, noted by the seller. So definitely those graded silvers might be more rare than we think when it comes to the pop reports down the line. So, uh, 7850 seems pretty reasonable, um, especially when we're going to, you know, if you think about two to three X of that, you can see his Herbert's prism silver being close to 2k. I think basing on what, uh, Kyler's is doing that, that makes sense with the market right now. So, um, I still think that silver mosaic will come down in terms of value, but I do think that that card's going to be maybe have a little late little jump towards the end once things level out for both products, just because I think those mosaic silvers might be harder to harder to find, but we'll see how Prism does in terms of grading. And then kind of the fun card for Herbert, uh, his Genesis Raw sold for 1500. So the Genesis, car Genesis cards, those SSPs that people are looking for, really cool design, the black, green, blue, uh, looks great, but 1500 is another big time chase to the upside we just talked about. Uh, Burroughs Reactive Green for PSA 10, 460. Those come out of the mega boxes, I believe. Those are also really cool parallel cards. And then uh, kind of a cool card for him, it's uh, Rookie Auto for Burrow, uh, 1375, and it wasn't quite, it was off of bids. It's 1375 off of bids. So another big card. Typically those, even though they're sticker autos, the I've been kind of surprised the Mosaic autos have actually been doing quite well. Um, and they, they do look cool. They, they did a good job with those, I think. They made them look pretty desirable in terms of a card that you like to look at. So, um, so... <clears throat> Again, with all those prices I just mentioned, that those are all kind of some of the first hit in the market. So those are, they're going to be inflated. Bottom line, they're going to come down, but it's still just waiting to see where they level out to. It's going to be really interesting as we kind of go forward. So I guess just in summary of that segment, I just think that the mosaic cards where I want to pay attention to the pop reports and pay attention to the grading of them of like what's available in terms of supply. I think the prism is going to be basically three to three and a half X of what a mosaic is going to be in terms of the similar cards versus the greens versus the silvers uh, versus the base is kind of what it's looking like in comparison to basketball. 
So, um, but kind of just want to go on to segment two here with uh, quick takes from week nine. I've uh, kind of heard you guys' feedback. I'm not going to break down all the games. I know you guys are avid football fans, so we don't have to bore you to death with that. But I thought just five quick takes would be something good to kind of simplify it. And I think that take one is what in the world happened to the Bucks? <laughs> you know, the Saints brought the Bucks 38 to three, heading Brady's worst loss in his career at home. And it was at home, so uh, it's a very just interesting game. It just seemed like every time I looked on the, my phone, checking the stats, it's like Brady threw another pick, and you just kept thinking, is he going to come back? Is he going to come back? No, no, <laughs> and no. So the Saints just took it to them. They definitely established their uh, that they're the team to beat in the South right now, uh, taking a firm lead on that division. And but I don't know what to think of the, the Bucks right now. I was really surprised more on their defensive uh, I know I was mostly surprised on Brady's performance for sure, but I was surprised the Bucks defense didn't keep them in the game longer. The Saints diced them up early. Michael Thomas's return uh, had five for 50. We'll get to that. Nothing overly impressive, but it's just his first game back. And Antonio Brown actually saw 38 snaps, so he was involved. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what the Bucks do with him going forward and how they're going to uh, integrate all those receivers they have. They have a lot of productive guys with Gronk, A.B., Godwin, Evans, even Scotty Miller's had some success. So it's going to be a long, still a lot of season to go, but it definitely was a, a head scratcher that game. I thought it was a game of the week, and it turned to be the dud of the week. Uh, Josh Allen bounces back big with the win over Seattle. Uh, Wilson has four turnovers and struggled to get going. Just right off the kickoff, opening kickoff, the Bills had a nice little return on the kickoff and just seemed like the Bills were going to win that game from the start. Seattle was just playing catch-up the whole time, and uh, Josh Allen had a massive game, over 400 yards. Uh, kind of just showing, again, the big concern with Seattle going forward in terms of them being a true Super Bowl contender with that defense. It's just going to be really difficult, and if Wilson can't do it all one game, they're going to have a tough time beating some really good teams. Uh, take three, uh, Tua Madness is among us. <laughs> you know, Tua and the Dolphins beat Kyler at Arizona. A very entertaining game. I watched that game wire to wire. Both quarterbacks played great. Uh, it was just a really good game. And we got to start giving Tua and the Dolphins credit. I mean, that's back-to-back -back wins against the Rams and the Cardinals, who are two really difficult teams, two pretty respectable defenses. And so uh, everybody's kind of worried about – not everybody, but I mean, my, I was a little worried about Tua's start just because against two tough defenses off the get-go and seeing how you do and – He's been impressive. You know, he's a little bit uh, – he's moving around a little bit more in the pocket than I'd like. He's diving headfirst way more I like on his runs. He's not really protecting himself, which with his injury concerns, that's definitely just getting me worried about him. It's, you know, one game going for it, I guess, but that's not going to be a long-term thing. He's got to learn to do the smart things of sliding and taking care of his body because that team's going to need him to take it to that next level. But Miami, I mean – Bills look good last week, but Miami's there. They're in the AFC East. They have they have a chance to make some noise and taking that division. And if Miami gets in the playoffs, too, his prices are going to skyrocket. So I think that you know that gives him a legitimate chance to pass some of the other two, as the other two teams are struggling with Burrow and Herbert, uh, even though they're playing extremely well. Uh, Steelers get all they can handle from the ho hum cow the Cowboys, but hang on to remain unbeaten. Uh, the Steelers barely beat the Cowboys, which is kind of a little bit of a shock with a fourteen point spread and how much better the Steelers are and Cowboys are down their fourth string quarterback off the practice squad. Uh, but they pulled it out, which is, you know, good. You got to win the ugly one sometimes, but still the Steelers just probably weren't that motivated to play. Uh, like I said, Cow the Cowboys have been a mess with their injuries and quarterback situation. Uh, Chiefs had Panthers in a very competitive game with CMC's return. So uh, Christian McCaffrey is back. Had a great game, over 150 yards of total offense, two touchdowns, uh, kind of back to his – uh, workload. I uh, did get dinged up a little bit, which we'll talk about with a shoulder. Uh, so hopefully that's not going to uh, slow him down too much. Hopefully it's a minor thing because it's really fun when he's out there playing. Uh, those teams with those running backs that can kind of help out and keep the chains moving. That really uh, seems to be a problem for the Chiefs, but the Chiefs executed on offense so efficiently that they were able to outlast the Panthers at the end. But overall, a really good game. Uh, they had a long, long field goal shot to try and take, it, take the Chiefs down, but didn't quite get it. So going on our next uh, segment here, just wanted to kind of get into the rookie report with the uh, week nine uh, mosaic pricing with them. And I'm going to also just give you their stats. So as I kind of run through these, I'm just going to mention their roughly their base mosaic price, just kind of give you an idea where they're going. Uh, the one thing I've noticed is definitely gotten to like a cliff and we're going to talk about this at the end, but it's to the point now that if you're not one of the top three guys, that it's just everybody's super cheap. And we're going to have some thoughts on that at the end for you. Just to think about as you're, grabbing more guys and looking for guys to kind of get some some cheap finds so with our tier one is going to be our three 
uh, quarterbacks that are performing and that are commanding the, the value in the hobby. We got Burrow with $26 for his base mosaic. He was on by this week. Herbert with 26 for his base as well, right in that range. 20 for 42, 326, two TDs, five carries, 24 yards. Had a really nice throw in the at the end of the game, last second play to win it. Uh, was reversed. The guy kind of had it, dropped it between his legs. So we definitely gave him a chance to win the game with the last play. And I had a little bit of a scare, a little bit of injury scare on the touchdown to get him close uh, before that, uh, but came back and put them in position to almost win the game. Seems like the Chargers have been so close in so many games with Herbert. It just it's weird that he's two and six how well he's played. It seems like they're six and two because at the end of the game they're just always right there. Uh, Tua again, like I said, he beat the Cardinals in Arizona. It was twenty for twenty eight. 248, two TDs, seven carries for 35 yards, and the 34-31 win. Uh, two is $22 for his base right now, so he's just a notch under those guys. Uh, he's probably a buy right now. I mean, at $22 for those Mosaic uh, bases is just because he's he should be equal to the other two. He's at least the 26 range by what he's done off the hop. I mean, he's he was drafted ahead of Herbert. He's in a better situation than both of them in terms of team. Miami has... Uh, the Texans first round pick next year. So they're going to have another top 10 talent they're going to add next year, which could be a receiver like Waddle or somebody out of Alabama that could be the next guy for Tua because they have Parker, which we'll get to later in the show, but not much else receiving wise. He's spreading the ball around really well. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Tua looks great. It's been a great start, better start than I thought he would have. I thought it'd be a little bit rougher and it's been really impressive. It's kind of the tier two guys I, could, I kind of put um, is CD Lamb, uh, he had four catches for 71 yards and a touchdown. His base mosaics are two bucks. Uh, you got Justin Jefferson. He had three for 64. His mosaic bases are 250. Uh, Jalen Hurts, two to three dollars for his uh, base. He's not playing right now, but we know that you know Wentz has struggled and it could be a possibility soon. Uh, CEH, uh, 350 for his base. He had five for 14, 320 and a touchdown. So still just not getting the running game going in KC yet. Um, Jordan Love, four to five dollars, and still not playing. So, pretty interesting price ranges there. Uh, I think CD Lamb being two dollars is a is a good deal for sure. Uh, Hertz is going to get a nice little bump if he does get any starts this year. Which, if it just keeps being neck and neck with the NFC least, NFC least in terms of that division, they might say, "Why not? Let's give this guy a chance." And if we miss, we just get a better draft pick <laughs> because at, at this point, uh, Wentz isn't playing well. He's coming off the buy this week, so I'm gonna be interested to see how he does off the buy. Uh, because it would have been kind of a good week to give Hertz a shot coming off the bye. Uh, Jordan Love, I'm kind of surprised that Jordan Love's still four to five dollars compared to the others, just because there's been like no Rogers is playing so well, there's no shot for him to get any time this year. And so I'm surprised that he's still kind of hanging in that four to five dollar range for his base. CEH is still pretty decent in that group. Um, he's still got a touchdown this week, but just not getting not getting the volume now or the running game. So uh, against the Panthers, they just aired it out. Um, I think. Kels had 10 catches. I believe uh, Tyreek had eight catches. So they were just, they're airing it out pretty well. But that's kind of the tier two in my eyes in terms of the guys that I think have pretty good uh, chance to either rise with those backup quarterbacks, they get a chance, or those kind of elite receivers and then CH being the top running back in the class. So it's tier three. We have uh, DeAndre Swift. Uh, he's $1 right now. His silver is $4. And like, so we'll talk about this at the end. Uh, but 13 for 64 for three catches and 33 yards. Uh, Chase Claypool, two for uh, two to three dollars. He's eight for 69, 13 targets. He led the team in targets against Dallas, which was impressive. So it seems like they're kind of up and down, kind of once Big Ben locks on a guy he wants to lock into. He seems to be consistently going to that guy and giving him looks. And it happened to be Claypool that week. Uh, we've been talking about Judy quite a bit in the show, and he's really coming on. Uh, two to three dollars for his base. He had seven for 125 and a touchdown and 14 targets from Drew Locke. So he's definitely getting his attention now. He's definitely getting the looks. Have a little bit of drop issues, so hopefully they can get rid of that. The speed in the route running's there. He's doing all that stuff that's really impressive, and he's he's making some noise. I think it's going to get better. It's going to be about that type of game going forward, and he'll start to open, open up his eyes as he – open up some eyes as he uh, continues this good play. J.K. Dobbins had a tough game. Uh, he's, his bases are going for a dollar. His silvers for five bucks, but 12 for 30, two catches are five yards. He's playing the Colts, though, one of the top teams in the defense, top defenses in the league. So definitely expected a tough game for him. Chase Young's uh, still pretty desired. A rookie is going about two to three bucks for his base mosaic. Uh, he had a sack this week, kind of get back on track. He was injured two weeks ago. It was kind of that slowly coming back, but kind of got back in the sack column. So that's good. And then Jonathan Taylor's $1.50. For his base mosaic, six for 27, one TD. He's been a little bit banged up, and he had an early fumble, which they didn't give him the ball after. So 
he's kind of having a tough time getting out of the doghouse when it comes to the Colts right now. Um, his mosaic colors are just cheap all across the board. His silver is kind of like Swift. Um, I think his prism for Jonathan Taylor is five bucks. His silver is twelve. So um, let me get to the sleepers, and I'm just kind of come back to that tier three and just kind of kind of thoughts of the rookies for this this class. But some sleepers just to keep watching. Uh, Zach Moss out of Buffalo. Uh, he's had touchdowns consecutive games now. He only had nine for eighteen a touchdown and two catches for thirty. But he's getting more and more involved with the Bills' offense since he's been he has he was out with like turf toe for a couple weeks, and he's just starting to get more and more involved with Singletary. Uh, liked him come out of Utah. KJ Hamler has really been picked up in terms of his usage with the Broncos. It seems like they're really focusing on their rookies, um, giving Judy and Hamler a lot of targets. Hamler had 10 targets last week, cashed in six for 75 and a, a rush for 15 yards. So coming off of his game winning touchdown two weeks ago, he's kind of getting going as well. He's a really good slot kind of speedster out of Penn State. Really good, uh, just good job getting open. Good. Good route runner. Yeah, he was just a good guy to watch at Penn State. I remember really enjoying him. He just did a lot of things really well. Just size is an issue. He's really small. Um, Antonio Gibson continues to kind of be productive. Six carries, 20 yards, one touchdown, three receptions, for 35 yards. The Giants have actually a really good defense this year. They've been pretty tough, and so it was kind of tough sledding. They also uh, lost Brand Allen again uh, to an injury, pretty bad one. He'll be out for the year, and so they were pretty much kind of a mess offensively for a while trying to get uh, Alex Smith involved. Uh, Denzel Mims just played tonight in uh, against the Patriots, had four for 62 again. So he just kind of keeps slowly uh, chipping away, kind of getting noticed. Uh, like he looks good, a couple good catches, broke, broke some tackles. Um, I do like him quite a bit as well as a sleeper. And the last sleeper is the guy that kind of just took over for the Jags off of uh, Minshew's injury is Jake Lutton out of Oregon State. Uh, 26 for 38, 304 yards, one touchdown, one pick, and he had a 13-yard rushing TD. So right now he only has a mosaic auto in the product. It's kind of interesting. I didn't know that. And it's um, he has not any base cards. He has no color, any of that stuff. And his base his mosaic auto hit over hundred dollars after the game on Sunday. So just completely jumped. I really need to go look and see what it was before that. But I have a feeling it was pretty cheap. Uh, but he he you know he had a little bit of um, a little bit of hype coming in the off season. Uh, the Jags didn't want to put him on the practice squad because they didn't want to lose him. So they they elevate him to the not on the active roster uh, faster than they normally would have, but they liked him coming out. He was a pretty talented guy. Oregon state's been struggling in terms of a program for a while. So he was kind of overlooked, but has some skills. I mean, he had a pretty good game for his coming out party, like he 300 yards, a touchdown. I mean, the Texans aren't a great defense, but overall, overall pretty impressive. Might be another Minshew type gym there to pay attention to. And they might give him a longer look or they're in position to draft second right now, which would put them in the quarterback sweepstakes still, but Nice little sleeper there with Jake Lutton. So the coming back to this overall, the rookie prices, things are dying down. Mosaics definitely kind of, I think, hit the bottom. I just looking at some of the guys uh, long-term, like Dalvin Cook, uh, his first two years, he had 354 yards rushing, 613 yards rushing for four TDs in the first two years. And then his third year, 1,111 TDs in year three. Uh, Derrick Henry was 490, 740 with 10 total TDs in two years. And then his third year, 1059 and 12 touchdowns. CMC, 435 uh, rushing and 600 yards receiving his first year with seven touchdowns, which is a great year. Still over 1,000 yard all purpose yards as a rookie. But then in his next year, he had 1,900 total yards and 13 TDs. And so, just my point is, it just takes on these guys some time to get acquainted, to get things rolling in terms of being the guy. I do think the league has shifted more with running backs specifically to trying to find two headed monsters or find uh, usage downs, keep guys more effective longer. So the numbers aren't as massive like we were seeing Dalvin Cook these last couple of weeks. But overall, it's just you look at guys like Antonio Gibson, you know, he's going for a dollar. Zach Moss is going under a dollar. J.K. Dobbins is going for a dollar. DeAndre Swift's going for a dollar. Their silvers are four dollars for DeAndre Swift right now. It's just so many of these guys, they are talented. Uh, Swift is probably my favorite running back coming out. He probably landed in the worst situation uh, for me. I just don't like what the Lions are doing. But he overall could be a guy that could get to a big time level in three years once they put a line together. Then you know you never what's going to happen with the franchise. So I just kind of put the bug in your ear that these mosaic prices are so cheap. Pick two or three of these guys in this list that are super cheap and just go get 20 of their bases and grade them and just wait and just see what happens. I think, you know, for me of the list, I think Dobbin stands out just because I like his situation. Judy stands out. And of the sleepers, I think Mims is probably Mims and Gibson. I just think there are some guys that I really think that 
are going to be starters for those teams for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, so there's something to think about in terms of just looking at those big guys and how they kind of generally slowed it, started slower than we thought. So, um, and all three of those guys I mentioned have their rookie cards for Prism. I know it's we're talking about Motek, but all three of their rookie cards for Prism have, are over 200 bucks. So, just kind of something to think about. All right, so coming into uh, another segment here: buy, sell, hold. So. That's uh, five guys here that are pretty interesting. Um, one that's kind of a sleeper, that probably not even a grading buy, more just like a, a you can call it a quick flip if you want. I just don't like being referred to as a flipper, but <laughs> uh, something to think about. Uh, so we'll start with a big one: uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, 2018 rookie prism base, uh, PSA 10 is 830. Um, I would say hold for right now would be my answer, and then I'll kind of defend it. I, I would hold it, and then I would look to sell right for the playoffs if they're if they end up win that division, uh, somehow they come overtake the Steelers and win the division, I would still write for the playoffs. I'm just not confident he's going to perform or w- win a ring with the Ravens right now. I just I just don't think he's going to be able to do it with his passing efficiency. Uh, I still like it's the conversation I had with Rathburn on Discord again. Just continues continues to worry me, and I think that some people have looked. He's six and two. He's played extremely tough defenses, so. Um, I'll be holding him now. I'm hoping he's going to have a nice little finish this season here. But just in comparison, 62% completion percentage is uh, not great. He has 21 sacks this year. He had 23 all of last year in his MVP season. So he's already at 21. Some can be attributed to the line, but some he's just holding the ball too long and trying to you know run too much. And he's, they're just it's not as easy this year for him. Um, last year he was rushing 87 yards per game, and this year he's rushing 57 yards per game. So Again, the defenses he's faced this year have been very difficult. It's been a very tough uh, nine weeks for uh, the Ravens in terms of their strength of schedule when it comes to defenses. But if this end of the season doesn't get much better, uh, definitely going to be looking to sell any Lamars that I have going into the playoffs. I just don't. I think it's going to be a flop for the Ravens potentially again, like it has been. And I just want to get out of that before it gets too bad. Um, Christian McCaffrey, 2017 Silver Prism PSA 10, 400 bucks. Um, a hold i put a hold and i would buy if this shoulder injury is nagging we see any drop i still think mccaffrey is you know the best running back in the game i still think he's going to be doing it for a while i know the running back position it's hard to to say that with the pounding they take and the risk of injury i just think that he's a different beast kind of him and henry are kind of guys i feel the best about him henry and zeke i'm not too worried um of their season or careers being ended short i think they're gonna be around the league for a while and they already have. It seems like they already have been. Um, so yeah, he'd be a hold and then buy if it, you know this injury here with the shoulder. He misses a week or two, and then people start to get worried. Uh, Michael Thomas, that we talked about him since he came back, his 2016 PSA uh, 10 Prism, uh, three hundred dollars. Is his first game back from his ankle hamstring, five for fifty one. Uh, kind of was game flow because the, the Saints got so ahead, it just didn't really get into the Michael Thomas needed to do a lot. Um, they kind of used the sh- short intermediate stuff with Kamara and ran the ball and they got ahead quite a bit. They were still taking some shots in the end zone. Uh, Peyton was definitely sticking it to Tampa Bay for sure, but Michael Thomas just didn't have to do a lot. So I don't think they forced it to him. Um, you know, he, his catches were kind of the same catches he has the short catches that he extends longer. Um, the biggest thing with Thomas is his yards per catch. Like he always catches the ball, you know, under nine yards. He's not much of a vertical threat. And I just don't know how long that's going to be sustainable, and especially if Breeze has come to the end of his career. So to me, Michael Thomas is a clear sell because I, I was actually surprised he was still at 300 with all the negative uh, coming out of his injury and wanting to be traded and everything that kind of up in the air in terms of his future. So he 300 bucks, that's an easy sell for me. Uh, I just think he's kind of on the trending down as a talent. Uh, don't get me wrong, he had a great run. I just don't see that uh, being the top receiver price for much longer. So I would definitely be looking to sell Michael Thomas if I had some. Uh, we talked about Aaron Rodgers maybe in week one. It just seems like he keeps performing, so I wanted to mention him again. Uh, 2005 Topps Chrome Rookie BGS 9.5, uh, 1100 uh, You know, he's kind of a sneaky MVP candidate. I know Russell Wilson's probably he playing better, and Mahomes is playing a little bit better, but he's, he's putting up really good numbers too, and he's really efficient right now. He was 25 for 31 for 305 and four TDs on Thursday night. I just think he's an instant – uh, Hall of Famer, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer when it's said and done for him. And I think that the Green Bay has a chance to take the NFC. The NFC is pretty wide open. I think Seattle's defense is susceptible. 
Um, the Saints, you know, they they look good one week, they look terrible another week. So I do think that that uh, conference is wide open, and once you get to the Super Bowl, anything can happen. Uh, even though the AFC is quite a bit stronger. So Aaron Rodgers would be a buy for me right now. I just think it's a long-term hold. You know, he's sitting at, you know, 1100 for BGS 9.5. I think the PSA 10s, uh, off the top of my head, I think they're closer to 17, 1800. And I still think that's relatively low for his PSA 10 tops chrome. I just think that's a card that uh, not, not a huge pop report on it. But I think that, you know, you see Brady and the other cards up in the 10 to 12 grand range when they're high. I think Rodgers is a steal if he's a fifth of that. Uh, so this is kind of a sneaky one that I had for you was Devontae Parker. So Devontae Parker is a 2015 silver prism. And so this is not a huge gainer here. This is not <laughs> the Aaron Rodgers 1200. This is his 2015 silver prism is $17 raw. And so you, you probably don't know why are you wasting my time with this maybe, but it's uh, he's 27. So he's not super young. He's just coming off his first 1100 yard year. If the Dolphins make a run with Tua and he's their number one guy, you could see a little jump in those. I think there could be a nice, easy opportunity to make, a quick little turn on Devonte Parker because I do think he's a talented receiver. He's been nagged with injuries in a bad situation for most of his career in Miami and things are starting to come together. And I think that he's basically to his guy. He's the top guy there. If Tua keeps progressing, I could see him put up some big games. And like I said, you never know if Tua take those guys to the playoffs that that defense they have going with uh, what Flores is putting together. I mean, anything can happen. And if you know, he can make that big catch in the playoffs to beat so-and-so or, we just don't know, but I think there's a little sneaky opportunity there with Devontae Parker to potentially get yourself a little <clears throat> quick flip from a playoff run. So hope that was a little bit better this week for you guys. I shorted out a little bit, uh, tried to focus on the products, as you guys said. Again, I really appreciate the feedback. Uh, you guys' feedback kind of helped me be more comfortable. Uh, please definitely get at me with uh, Twitter at tbanker28 anytime you want to chat. Definitely want to interact with you guys and keep the show going. I really love doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, but just kind of finished up here. I just want to look at some games to look forward to next week. Uh, the Colts at the Titans on Thursday night. It's a nice one. It's a, a division, a very important game in the division. If the Colts can win, they'd be tied with Titans in the division. So definitely something I'm paying attention to with that Colts defense. If they can slow down the running game, the Titans they are going to have a chance. Uh, Chargers at Miami. Uh, Tua versus Herbert. That's going to be a fun game to watch. I hope that game's on for me. I'll, I'd be excited to watch those two go at it. It was really fun watching Tua against Kyler last week and just seeing what Tua's done against the Cardinals and the Rams. Will they have a letdown against the Chargers or can they keep it rolling for three in a row? Uh, Bills at Cardinals. So see how Kyler responds and the Bills just kind of a big win. It's a really important game for the Cardinals to keep up with the NFC West division. And then speaking of that division, probably the game of the week that I'm going to be watching is uh, Seattle at the Rams. If the Rams win, they will be tied for the division lead. So if the Cardinals beat the Bills and the Rams win, they'll be a three-way tie at the top of that division. Uh, Rams are coming off a bye. Uh, their defense is stingy. And they'll probably be able to score on Seattle. So, I mean, they have a chance uh, to, to take it to Seattle. So, we'll see if Seattle can bounce back, if the Rams can get in position to win that league or win that division. But uh, some good games next week. I'll be back next week for week 10. Again, thanks a lot, guys. Take care.